Hello, my friends. Thank you for joining me at Evolutionary Energy Arts once again. So we are looking for, uh, basically, we're looking at a message that's coming out of Noah. And what this message is saying is basically that the pole shift is speeding up. And it's speeding up to a degree where all the models that they've given on the northern polar region are now void because it's outside of the margin of error because it's moving so fast that they're not keeping up with it. So this is a message to world magnetic model users and it's to inform you that gridded variation error has recently exceeded the performance specifications in the Arctic region. Other geographic areas and other model parameters are not affected yet. The increased GV error may adversely affect compass navigation in those errors in those areas. We invite your feedback on potential impacts and whether an out of cycle WMM update would benefit your operations. So the root cause this performance degradation is caused by fast changing core flows in the north polar region of the Earth's outer core. And you can see it's, according to the graph, gone crazy, <laughs> basically. It's just, you know, like off the charts. So our polar reversal, our polar shift is speeding up rapidly. I was talking to a client about this yesterday, and it was the first time we broached the subject. and the client just s said, well, yeah, but these things take a long time, don't they? And the answer that I gave her was not really. You know, there's, I'm not an expert again, but when we look at what's happening and the speed of what's happening, and there's so much evidence to show that things can just change in an instant. So I think a lot of what we've get gotten in the past has been just basically to keep people, you know, from freaking out and just make it feel like everything happens, you know, on this glacial pace, very slow, very gradual, unless it's global warming that's induced by humans, then that's a totally different story. So I want to just give you these two thoughts. And the first one is, as above, so below. And many of you that are into um, some of the Western mystery traditions or anything that's hidden uh, will recognize this. And the other is that the universe is an infinite multidimensional system of fractal patterns. Think fractals. As we go into all the stuff that's going on right now, this is out of Breibart. The NOAA is now being shown that they had 2.5 degrees Fahrenheit of data tampering. So they were basically knowingly fudging data to make it seem that human-induced global warming was 2.5 degrees Fahrenheit worse than we thought. When we look at cycles, we see that there's always a period of global warming followed by global cooling. It's just a natural cycle that occurs with or without, you know, human interference. And it has since, you know, the dawn of time. So it's, it's natural, you know, and it's triggered, as we know right now, uh, by the grand solar minimum that is going on. The fact that the sun has less output now than it has in 9,300 years. The sun's output now is lower than any of the other mini ice ages between now and the last full ice age. So with lower output, you can expect a more severe ice age to occur. I would think it'd be pretty obvious. It, it should be more severe than the last ice ages, mini ice ages that we've gone through going back 10,000 years. So Fudging of data. Does it happen? Oh, yes, it happens. You know, there are agendas underway. It's always 
boils down to money and profits and taxes and things along those lines and that's so so sad when you're talking about people's lives people's property people planning their future really really not good so we have mudslides flash floods threaten southern california two months after deadly storm and you know major storm battering the west coast we have a major storm battering the east coast we have a march that is significantly colder than february and that's that's in most locations really across the united states very undeniably to say the least interesting and unusual weather that we are experiencing and obviously indicative of true climate change and again the climate always changes you know nothing is set in stone everything is always in a state of flux that's what we have climate change is natural it's going to always change we're never going to get into a period where it's going to be the exact same thing and never change again that's just not the way it works however the severity of storms and the intensity of these changes is definitely increasing one thing not climate related that i definitely wanted to touch on again is the out of control chinese space station that's going to crash into the earth because they were saying more like april 5th is what they were expecting now they're saying uh the chinese are saying that's going to probably crash into earth over the weekend and as i touched on before in the hopi video um you know, some are saying perhaps this is blue kachina because there's going to be the two kachinas. And I'm going to do just a video on the kachinas themselves uh, because it's always resonated with me so much. It really, really has. And there are such tie-ins between the Hopi prophecies and the biblical prophecies and then some other uh, prophecies from other sources that all kind of say the exact same thing. So... Will this look like a blue star coming down? That's kind of a question. And where is it going to come down? Well, they are showing right now that the most highly uh, likely places are going to be in the yellowish areas on the uh, map that is on this link, which basically puts it, if you're in the U.S., the highest chance is going to be from Northern California, Southern Oregon, across Nevada and then straight across the country going through like Indiana and going through Ohio and Pennsylvania and New York and New England so if you're in Europe it's it's going to be Spain and, and going on through like Italy and going on through um, Turkey and some of the areas over there and then cutting through the northern part of China and northern uh, Japan so in the southern hemisphere, it has a higher likelihood of going through Argentina and Chile and New Zealand. So things to be aware of because there could be a chunk that uh, might weigh a ton or more that comes down on the ground. So And also the fact that it has very, very toxic fuel on it. So this fuel can cause liver and nerve damage to humans after long-term exposure. So something to just be aware of and keep an eye on because you just never know what might drop down on your head from the sky these days whether it's an out of control Chinese space station or record hail you never know you don't want to own one of these houses remember I was showing you on the on the video some houses that were very very precarious in um, the UK well yeah, some of them did fall down off the cliffs now um, from that coastal erosion. And uh, the coastal erosion has been tremendous up in the UK area. It's just, the ocean is just eating away at it. And it's going to be something that increases globally, and it is increasing globally. And so, you know, several houses have now fallen, and uh, they're just basically destroyed losing the floor out from under them and uh, many of you have asked questions about you know what do what do i feel like how long is going to be safe in certain areas and 
I'll go to the beginning of this video. The North Pole is shifting faster than they had anticipated, so it we just don't know. But definitely we need to make our preparations. And um, as I've shared before, I absolutely love where I live. I live um, a half a mile from the water. And um, I love Florida. You know, it's beautiful. I want to stay here as long as possible. Um, but I'm thinking about buying property somewhere in uh, Arizona or New Mexico for just long-term ability because I feel like it's going to be a safer zone. Um, there are so many things to take into consideration, such as what if Yellowstone goes? You don't want to be in the, you know, the mega impact zone there. Even though we will get ash cover if it did go all over the U.S. And even though if Yellowstone goes, you know, there might not be um, a lot of hope for most people um, in the United States period. Uh, but something rings true to me from the Hopi prophecies and the Hopi, uh, you know, visions and their tradition. So I'll kind of trust in that unless, you know, and when I'm guided by spirit to go somewhere else. And ultimately, I do feel like I've, you know, my personal belief is in the fact that I think that we do come back more than once. I don't think that, you know, you just have one life. I think that the, uh, the spirit and the soul is eternal. And I think that we've done this all before and, and we'll, most of us will probably do it again. Although I do believe in ascension as well, which is a, another interesting thing to get on as far as topics. Um, so listen to your inner voice. Dangerous volcanic activity around the world. We touched on Kawa Asian releasing toxic gases yesterday and the poison 30 in Indonesia. Giant cracks opening up in Kenya's Rift Valley. And we also have giant cracks. If you remember, I showed you earlier down in Peru around Nazca that have opened up. So very interesting. Giant cracks basically around the uh, equator and just below the equator. Ambe eruption has destroyed crops in Vanuatu. Canelon inflates the Philippines. So tons of volcanic activity going on. And these cracks, again, I mean, I, I, I feel like it's, it's showing you that we have an expanding Earth and the Earth is expanding. And some um, subscribers have touched on the fact that they believe that ultimately the Earth is perhaps going to be a star. And that's something that many people would maybe not consider or, you know, that a planet could evolve to become a sun or a star. Uh, but perhaps everything evolves along a certain trajectory. And perhaps that is what happens. Think about the plasma again being what is at the core of the Earth. And, uh, you know, again, I my personal thing, <coughs> my personal belief is in that we do have a plasma core. I think it makes perfect sense. And I do believe that it is an electric universe. Spring Northeaster blankets Mid-Atlantic. And some of you have yelled at me saying it's not a Northeaster. It's a Nor'easter. Well, Nor is short for North. Easter means it comes out of the east as far as the way the wind direction goes, which is counter to the usual flow. Usually, you know, coming from the west to the east. This is coming out of the northeast. Nor'easter. Same thing. Blankets, Mid-Atlantic, shatters snowfall records. And, uh, you know, if something tells me this is just going to be the norm now. And again, the norm will be ever-changing. But as far as the changeability, severity, intensity, and frequency of storms. Fourth Northeaster in three weeks. Leaves 90,000 without power after heavy snow. At least four people have died in this nor'easter. That brought snow, poor visibility, and slippery conditions to the Mid-Atlantic and the Northeast. Or maybe I should call it the Northeast. So the death toll stood at four. So, 
you know, again, alternative power sources. Be prepared for life without power generators. Um, you know, and solar in the Northeast might not be the most productive uh, way to go, but if we're in the South or especially in the West or Southwest, definitely solar is a great idea. Why are there suddenly so many Northeasters, Nor'easters? I'm going to keep harping on this now. And some people have said, hey, you know, it's always like this. Well, this longtime meteorologist did a study on it, and uh, he spent 20 years working on a book, putting it together, and he found that big northeast snowstorms simply don't form very often. When he and his co-author studied a half century of weather between 1949 and 2003, they found only 47 storms, basically in that time period of 54 years, that could be classified as nor'easters. So, no, it, it doesn't happen all the time. You know, some people were saying, oh, no, it happens all the time. We get three or four back to back to back all the time. No, we don't. Maybe after 2003, we started to because the poles are shifting. And from 1842 to 2000, we lost 10% of the magnetosphere. And now we've lost another 10% from 2000 to today. So we're looking at increased severity of storms all over. But if we go back traditionally, and we go back in that 54-year time frame, they only found 47 storms. So that's less than one a year. When we look at the USGS today, there's a couple newer ones out there. Uh, what stands out right now, Obviously, there's a ton of activity, a lot of swarming going on, as we've seen throughout California and Alaska. Also here on the Caribbean plate, we have a lot of swarming going on. There was actually this one odd little uh, quake that came in New York State. Um, I think it was like around 2.3, somewhere around that range. That was about three days ago. We have some activity up around Yellowstone, and we have some fracking quakes going on. There was one a little bit larger in Utah, 2.6, but the, the bigger ones are the ones over here in California. We have a pair of twin, 4.6, and let's see what the other one was, somewhere right around that, 4.7, over here in the Cascadia area. And, uh, you know, some people have had dreams. One shared a dream and I believe this person was in Southern California and they had a dream of a 10 point something that was going to occur soon. Um, I myself had a dream of just seeing the headline in, in the news saying 8.3 strikes off of Washington uh, about a month ago. 8.3 is what I saw off of Washington State and, uh, you know, so it's wonderful when you guys are sharing what you're seeing in dreams because we'll see what happens. It manifests. I do think that a lot of times we get warnings, warnings from, you know, perhaps it's our, our loved ones on the other side. Perhaps it's higher forces like angelic forces. Maybe it's, you know, our collective unconsciousness that's tapping into this, giving us these dreams, these warnings, these visions telling us to prepare and, and what areas not to go to or what areas to be concerned with. So keep sharing, my friends, definitely keep sharing. And so over here, March temperatures may end up colder than February, but a brief warm up is ahead. That will be some good news. And new data is, and this is the European Academy's Science Advisory Council. New data is confirming increased frequency of extreme weather events. There you go. It's confirmed. It's not just us. We, you know, we're just not conspiracy theorists here. It's not just us conspiracy theorists that are saying things are getting a little crazy. No, they are confirming. Yeah, you know what? You know, you crazy guys, you're right. And I say that with love and affection, my friends. European National Science Academies urge further action on climate change adaptation. So, of course, they're going to try to twist it and blame it on fossil fuels and all that, which another um, subscriber brought that up. And no, I'm not really pro-fossil fuel either. I don't want us polluting the planet if we don't have to. And I do think that in reality, there's 
technologies that have been hidden away where you know we could have clean uh renewable energy if you know it's basically when they could figure out how to market it and make a big enough profit to make it worthwhile to show the public that we have it because they want to keep it from us because it's all about these corporations making money it's not about taking care of mother earth or taking care of the 7.6 billion people on the earth it's about corporate profits and that's part of the system that has to change and that's what mother earth is doing right now she's going to wipe that system out and it's up to us humans to adapt and devise a system that is going to be harmonious with the earth so this is touching on that second 4.6 magnitude earthquake striking off the california coast now this could be a foreshock of something bigger or this could just be steam that's being released and perhaps things will settle back down again we we don't know at the moment but we shall see what happens rare weather phenomenon took tampa bay by storm and it's hail and there's been hail all over the place i touched on it on a uh, a video earlier the amount of big hail coming down big hail um is just crazy and yeah you get hail in the spring and you get hail in the fall you know in the transis transitions and the equinoxes um, but the size has been incredible hailstorm leaves 400 vehicles damaged at a texas dealership windows just busted out 400 vehicles damaged and a huge hailstone in Cullman may be a state record and this is Alabama and this this thing is 5.25 inches wide weighed 8.9 ounces and was 13.75 inches in circumference that's huge I don't want to get hit in the head with that and there is a video if you go check out um, I don't have it linked here Mr. MBB who is a great guy and I love going on his site and I think he's a awesome awesome youtuber and uh, it shows it's a video sent to him by one of his um, subscribers uh, and they're all held up in Walmart and everybody's afraid to step outside because of hail coming down and this is where it was or it's just incredible I mean you you really could get killed if you get hit in the head with something like that and we have Algeria under snow it's not just in the US this is this is a worldwide phenomenon Spain Germany Romania blanketed with snow and ice so you know if you're thinking about a nice warm vacay in Spain or you're gonna go to northern Africa for a vacation and you know just bask in the sun well bring your snow shovel so when we're looking at what we have going on right now and and again I look at null school every single day we have basically at the upper levels a polar vortex that now has been stationary three to four weeks in the same basic position although today I feel like it might have even dipped a little bit farther south and it's in Russia and so that's the strongest vortex we have going right now and it's been pretty stationary and I'm betting that this is the true magnetic North Pole that we have right now if that's the case then it's moved about 20 degrees um, off the center point of the axis of the earth there at the uh, you know geographic North Pole location uh, which w it's been moving consistently it it always moves it just wanders that's just part of what it does and then when we look we have a couple other vortex type flows going on and the one above it here more around Greenland was a little bit stronger and now it, it feels like it's it's weakening but now there's another one developing over more towards um, Alaska so it's interesting you know and perhaps and this is just my conjecture perhaps what we see on the surface of the earth is a reflection of what's on the inside as above so below and so if you remember on a video I did um, maybe about a week or two ago and I 
I'm going to bring it up again so you could see. And this is courtesy of Mr. Fixit Rick, which you have to check out his YouTube. Uh, this guy is great. And he's talking science and also consciousness. Um, so definitely go check it out. He has a lot of experiments and things on there. It's all about plasma and uh, a great channel. Again, I will have the links for that. Um, great channel. A lot to a lot to get into there. And I discovered it off of your my favorite earthquake man, Dutch's site. And this is again, and I'll have the link for this as well. This is what I think is kind of going on. This makes perfect sense. Perfect, perfect sense. When the Earth is has a strong magnetosphere and is spinning strongly, we have a strong North Pole. And when it starts to decline, it branches out and there's multiple vortices, like as the picture that we are looking at now shows. They just pop up in multiple locations. So let's just take a peek. Mr. Fix it, Rick. Now I wrote him and I said, hey, do you still have this... Uh this device, you know, and, and he wrote me back, and I don't want to get into that now. He, he apparently is getting his own problems on the tubes. But it's obvious. Look, hard magnetic north immediately. That's not a coincidence. And then look at the magnetic bands. It looks like the equator and where we would imagine the tropics of the Earth to be, right? Look, I mean, it's obvious. It takes out these magnetic bands that, that go to a north and south polarity, and it's almost exactly like what we'd imagine the Earth's magnetic field to be, which would then point towards... Earth's core is a super oscillating ball of plasma, superheated plasma, not like this, it's much hotter. Think of a lightning bolt, but doing this. Think of lightning bolts, millions and billions of lightning bolts doing this all at once in a giant rotating super oscillating core that would then come out and put out this heat and it reflects like it's a solid. So if you were to bounce radar off this, this would look solid. And I think that shows exactly what we have. I mean, it just seems to make so much sense. You know, give me your thoughts on this. And uh, definitely check out these channels. These are great, great channels. So this is on Off the Grid News. Better ideas for off the grid living. Because you know what? I think we have to think in terms of that, my friends. We have to think in terms of living off the grid. Because the grid's going to go down. There's no doubt that the grid's going to be going down at certain times. And, you know... Even the top scientists have said, you know, well, yeah, we might end up with rolling blackouts in various areas. And then other people have said that, no, we might hit the one big blast that's going to wipe it out and we're back to the Stone Age. So either way, think about living off the grid and how living among like-minded people could save your life. And this is a, an interesting little article. And... Um, this is what I've been getting messages about. You know, this is what my intuition has been saying. And I've been meeting more and more like-minded people all the time. So this is part of my plan, you know, and, and why I'm starting to do more research now. And it'll become more urgent to find the right location to find some land. And then go ahead and start to build on it. And see, you know, invite like-minded people to come and join me. Um... So that's that's part of what my plan is, and I'm urging you guys out there to think about similar things. You know, I mean, it could be that you're all you're all set. You already have your you know ten acres, and you know you have a stream running through. You have solar grids up. You're good to go. Um, that's great. There there are quite a few guys out there. Quite a few of you that are so organized, and it's wonderful. That's awesome, you know, and we have to think in terms of getting organized and, you know, banding together because it will be easier if we do have, you know, people we can lean on. And if you're in an urban situation and there's no way you're going to get out of this urban situation, then, you know, again, talk to neighbors, try to get friendly, you know, and perhaps if you're in a neighborhood that you you feel a little bit iffy about and like people aren't friendly there or what have you, or you've even thought about, you know, maybe in the future I want to sell this and move to a different spot. Well, maybe now's a good time to actually do that. You know, the real estate market's pretty good in most areas right now. So, you know, think about it, listen to your inner voice and, 
and see where that guides you you know talk to fr friends and family talk to people that are like-minded start to band together into little uh, communities and groups because think about what happened after the last major ice age you know we ended up basically coming into these tribal units and that's probably what we're going to end up in again tribal units basically communities of like-minded people everybody has different strong suits you know somebody might be great at tending to animals somebody else might have a green thumb somebody else might be an electronic wizard or able to fix things and able to build things you know some be good with construction some might be natural healers some might be a, a nurse or a doctor you know and could help with that type of thing so think about it and think about getting off the grid and being able to live off grid how to grow your own food and all so these are the things we need to all be kind of looking at and thinking about and then cultivate the spiritual in your life because too much too often we don't and that might mean something different to every individual to some it might be going to church every weekend to some it might be going to um drum circles and bonfires at the beach to others it might be getting out and just helping the homeless and that's beautiful you know whatever it is that you do that cultivates the spiritual could be a blog it could be a youtube channel it could be anything you know cultivate it cultivate the feeling of love and compassion within you and higher vibrations because that is what we're moving into this world that is going to come is going to be radically different from the world that is here now we are growing up you know, we are, we are graduating one level of school and going up to a new level. And this is going to be more of a unity consciousness. We are going to move from ego and selfishness and divisiveness into a more cohesive group. Doesn't mean we're going to be part of the Borg or anything like that. No, we'll still have our own individuality. We'll just have, we'll just have more compassion for each other and more consideration for each other and more consideration for the planet. That's what we're evolving into the selfishness and the divisiveness are part of what's leading to the, the destruction of this pattern of being because it can only go on so long before it, it starts to damage the earth itself and you know it just becomes something that's untenable and so as the body fights off infection so does the earth body fight off infection so we must not be an infection we must be a beneficial aspect to it and i will leave you with those words as always please thumbs up subscribe and share help support the channel please try to share and get this word out to as many people as possible and again i feel like the urgency there you know is to wake up as many as possible because prepared people are not going to panic prepared people are going to be safer people Prepared people are going to be happier and healthier people in the long run, especially if you're preparing in every way, you know, physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually. Prepare and share and subscribe. And I look forward to reading your comments. And thank you so much for sharing all your thoughts. It really is wonderful. And uh, send you much love and light, peace and happiness. And I'll speak to you all again very soon. Take care, my friends.